Namaste and a very, very good morning to all of you. In today's presentation, we'll be looking at part three of uh, the market basket analysis. To refresh uh, what we had done earlier, in part one, we spoke about uh, the EDA or exploratory data analysis of market basket analysis. In part two, we focused on the ECLAT algorithm. ECLAT stands for uh, Equivalence Class Transformation Algorithm. Uh, in part three, we'll be looking at uh, the a priori algorithm. Now, even before I demonstrate the a priori algorithm, what I will do is uh, call the library a rules. I've already installed uh, this particular library, so I'm not going to reinstall this. I'm just going to call the library a rules. In case you have not installed the library, I request you to install this particular library by using the command install dot packages open bracket double quotes, a rules, close the double quotes, close the parenthesis, install this particular library. Once you install this particular uh, library and uh, call the library a rules, in the next step, what you can do is uh, you can create an object which is called as transactions. How will you create this object? There is a data set which comes inbuilt with the A rules library. I'm going to assign this uh, data set groceries to the object transactions. Now that we have uh, assigned the uh, data set, now that we have assigned the groceries uh, data set to the transactions object, what we will be doing is we will be looking at the frequent item sets which customers buy. You're a customer, you walk into any of the retail outlets, there are, there's a good chance that you uh, pick up multiple items. You may pick up uh, domestic eggs uh, with uh, sauce, or you may buy bread and jam, you may buy other items, right? We are interested in looking at these patterns or associations wherein customers buy multiple, uh, multiple items. Now, uh, in a brick and mortar world, perhaps it's very, very easy for a shopkeeper to say which two items uh, sell very, very well together. But uh, in today's day and age, when you have millions and millions of items, it's a bit difficult to understand which two items or which three items the customers buy. And therefore, what we will be doing is we will be looking at what is called as frequent item sets. As the word itself suggests, frequent and item sets. Those items which customers buy together, like uh, shoes and belt along with the shirt, right? These are items uh, which are perhaps frequently selling. Uh, these two items, uh, these two or three items uh, which are selling together, once you know that uh, product A and product B are selling very, very well together, you can cross sell one item along with the other. This also helps the store managers this helps the store managers to decide product placements in the eye. So without wasting too much time, let me just uh, run the eclat function. This is the eclat function, which I will be running on the data set transactions. Let me just check my uh, spelling. The data set is uh, transactions. I'll have to specify the parameter here. This is the parameter keyword. I will feed a list. Now, uh, I will uh, give the support value. This is the minimum support that I am uh, providing as 0 0.075. Now, if you relax this number, if you provide a lower support value, you can see a lot of uh, frequent item sets being displayed. On the other hand, if you're slightly uh, more aggressive with this number, higher the support, naturally you see fewer items uh, being shown to you at a later stage. So please feel free to uh, experiment with this number uh, support. I'm specifying 0 0.075 as the support. Next, I will also be specifying the max length, the max length as 15. So these are uh, the things that I uh, will be looking at. I'll be looking at a minimum support of 0 0.075 and a maximum length of 15. Now, what I'll do is uh, I will store the output of a clack in an object, right? The output needs a place to live. So I can create an object called as frequent item sets. Frequent item sets. So just to explain uh, this command once again, a clack is the function 
that function uh, will run on the transactions data set and it will look for uh, this particular condition that is uh, the minimum support is 0 0.075 and the maximum length that i am providing is uh, 50 right so let me go ahead and uh, execute this so the code has run uh, successfully and uh, you can see here it says it is writing 16 rules so a clat function has created 16 rules and uh, it will be storing the, these 16 rules in an object called as frequent item sets. Now, let me just clear the screen and uh, inspect the rules of the eclat function. So I can just use the inspect command and pass this particular object, which is known as frequent items. So there is a spelling mistake looks like uh, I'm not uh, declared the object name uh, correctly. So it is frequent item sets. If you see here, I had created the object called as frequent item sets, but here I'm providing frequent items, which is wrong. And therefore uh, R is not able to understand what I want. Uh, fine, let me just go ahead and uh, change this. It is gonna be inspect frequent item sets, right? Once I click on frequent item sets, you can see here, it lists the items which are getting sold. That is whole milk, other vegetables, rolls and buns. It also gives the corresponding support and count here. To my surprise, what had I requested for? I had actually requested for item sets. I had requested for item sets, which means multiple products which uh, are sold uh, together. But uh, my conclusion when I look at this is most frequent item sets, I repeat, most frequent item sets correspond to the most frequent items as there are no more than two items in the item sets. You have barely one item you have only one item here and therefore the support here is not for a set of products it is for one particular product itself right this gives me a high level perspective about which are the items which are sold uh, prominently now what i'll do uh, at this stage is you can see a whole lot of items here like whole milk other vegetables rolls and buns yogurt soda so on and so forth i want to create rules uh, for these items. Now to create the rules, I am going to run an algorithm which is known as a priori. Right? So this is the algorithm which I will be running. It's called as a priori. And you can feed the data set. This particular data set, as I told you earlier, comes in built with the a rules library. So a priori function will be run on the groceries data set. You can specify the parameter here the parameter uh, values you need to specify. So let me just uh, provide list of, I need to provide the support here, support equals 0 0.009. Confidence equals 0.25. Confidence equals 0 0.25. And finally, the minimum length Please note this point, the minimum length is two, which means there should be an association of, there should be, uh, there should be at least two items in the basket, right? I don't want uh, the frequency, I don't need the support and such things, wherein, you, wherein the person has bought only one product, where I want to find out association of minimum of two products, which means you can, there can be more than two products as well. There could be three, four, five, six, seven, so on and so forth. So it's a very, very simple function as you can see here. There's a simple command that you can give that is a priori. Uh, you have to feed the data set and uh, the parameter values is what you'll be declaring. Let me just go ahead and uh, execute this particular command. My a priori function has run and it is just giving me some basic information here. Uh, this is very, very interesting. Let me draw your attention to uh, this particular line. It says writing 224 rules. 
very, very interesting, a priori algorithm has found 224 rules. When we say rules, each rule represents product associations. I do not know for sure whether there are two products uh, or three products or more than three products that it has found out, but um, it's very, very interesting to know that there are 224 rules that a priori has been able to dig out from the data set. And it has not taken uh, a long time to extract 224 rules. As you can see, it has hardly taken milliseconds. So this is, a, uh, this is about a priori. Now, I'm not able to see the rules. Now to fetch the rules, what I will be doing is I will recall this particular command, which is a priori. I am going to store this in an object and call it as rules. Remember, rules is like a bucket. It is like a container, which will contain all the 224 rules that a priori algorithm has extracted. Let me go ahead and execute this. It just gives me the same information as it, uh, uh, as it uh, had given earlier. It says that there are 224 rules. Fair enough. Now, what I am going to do is clear the screen and look at the summary of the rules. I want to see the summary of rules. So use the summary function. Summary is the function and rules is the object wherein a priori output has been saved. So summary of rules. Let me see what does this give me. You can just get a high level perspective of what is going on here. As you can see here, 111, there are 111 rules wherein two items, product association for two items have been found. There are 113 rules wherein product associations for three items have been found. If you take the sum of these two numbers, 111 and 113, you will be getting 224 uh, as the total number of rules. So out of 224 rules, 111 rules correspond to, uh, correspond to a situation wherein two products have been bought uh, by the customers. Similarly, 113 rules correspond to three products being brought by the customer. If you look at uh, the average basket size, the average basket size, it's around two and a half, right? Uh, the, median, uh, is, the median basket size would be around three. This is what I get to learn from this. There are other important measures as well, like support. We have discussed yesterday that support uh, represents uh, how popular an item is. Support corresponds to how popular an item is. There's another way of uh, interpreting since we are talking about item sets. Now, what does support mean in this context? It shows the frequency of patterns. I repeat, it shows the frequency of patterns in the rule. It is a percentage. It's just simply a percentage of transactions that contain both the products, which means if you're looking at those people who have, uh, who have purchased orange, uh, oranges and apples, uh, out of 10,000 transactions, 10,000 will be in the denominator. And let us say 1,000 people have bought both oranges as well as apples. So 1,000 will be in the numerator. So support will be equal to 1,000 divided by 10,000. 1,000 is uh, the number of people who have purchased both apples as well as oranges. 1,000 will be the, sorry, 10,000 will be the denominator because that represents the total number of transactions. So that is about support. Now, what about the mean support? Let's look at the mean support. It is 1.6%, uh, roughly around 1.6. That's what I can say. Now, let us look at confidence, which is, again, a very, very important metric. Now, what is this confidence? Right? Confidence represents the strength of implication of a rule. I repeat. It is the strength of implication of a rule. Let me look at the mean confidence level. To carry forward that analogy of customers buying apples and oranges, in this context, what is, uh, what is confidence? Confidence can be evaluated by using a simple formula, and that is number of transactions wherein people purchased both apples and oranges 
let us say that is 700 so 700 people bought both apples as well as oranges so 700 will be in the numerator divided by number of transactions that bought only apple i repeat in the denominator you will be looking at the number of transactions wherein customers bought only apple right so this represents the confidence now lift is very very important uh, because uh, of multiple reasons i've discussed this earlier lift value of exactly one means that products a and b it can be any two products product a and b are independent of each other very very important if lift value is bigger than one it means that product a and b are positively correlated For product a and b are positively correlated which means if more and more people buy apple there is a tendency for them to also buy orange right that is a simple way of uh, interpreting lift lift greater than 1 indicates product a and b are positively related a lift value of smaller than 1 indicates that product a and b are negatively correlated they do not go well together so when you look at the average support it is around 1.6 when you look at the confidence level uh, when you look at the average confidence level it is 37 percent and when you look at the mean lift it is 1.94 you can round it off and say it is approximately two so this is the this is a high level summary that uh, a priori uh, this is a high level summary of the output of a priori now let's just go uh, let's just go ahead in this discussion now we have run the a priori function we have looked at the summary now it is time for us to inspect the top five rules i am saying top five rules this is entirely under your control if you are interested in examining the top 10 or top 25 rules please feel free now how do you do this again i am going to run the inspect function this inspect function i am going to pass another function inspect of let me just correct the spelling it's inspect of head of you want to sort the rules you want to sort the rules remember we have stored the output of a priori in an object called as rules you can put a comma here and say by lift value should it always be lift not necessary it can be based on support or confidence it's entirely under the control of the user please feel free to provide any of these three metrics if you can either use lift or confidence or support depending upon what you want i am interested in sorting the rules based on the lift value and therefore i am providing uh, i am uh, providing lift uh, in the by statement the question is how many rules do i want to extract i want to extract five rules here therefore i'm providing five right so i've opened uh, three brackets here i made sure that i uh, have used three brackets to close uh, this particular function very interesting what do you see here the moment you see here the moment you execute this particular command it returns the five major rules right you can see here in lhs lhs also we refer to lhs as antecedent and RHS is referred to as consequent. LHS corresponds to antecedent. RHS corresponds to, uh, 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 my apologies, LHS corresponds to antecedent and RHS co uh, corresponds to consequent. If a person buys berries, you can expect him to buy sour cream as well, right? You, you can expect him to buy whipped cream as well. It is giving you the support and the corresponding confidence but I am really, really interested in the high lift value corresponding to this. This is 3.79. The lift value is 3.7. And because I've sorted this by lift value, you can see here I've provided by lift. All the high values of lift will be listed right at the top. And the low values of as you go down, the lift value goes on decreasing. So you can see this. It has appeared in 89 
transactions. So what does this mean? It simply means that people buy berries and they like to eat berries with whipped cream. That's what it means. People like to buy berries and people like to eat berries with whipped cream. Now, how do you interpret 3.79? Very, very important question. How do you interpret this lift value of 3.79? Remember, just now we discussed that a lift value which is bigger than one, a lift value which is greater than one indicates that A and B are positively correlated. Lift indicates the preference to buy the preference to buy whipped cream, given that a customer has already bought berries. I repeat, list indicates what is the preference of a customer to buy whipped cream, given that he has already bought berries. Very, very important. Now, when you look at the corresponding lift, let me just uh, draw your attention to 3.79. What does 3.79 mean? It means that it means that a person who buys berries is 3.79 times more likely to pick up or purchase sour cream as compared to an average customer. So let me just give you the example of John and Matthew. John is a person who has purchased berries. Matthew has not bought berries. Now, if I go and pitch uh, whipped cream to John, who has already bought berries, John will demonstrate 3.7, John is 3.7 times more likely to buy whipped cream as compared to a customer like Matthew. So lift is a very, very powerful metric in that sense of the word because it helps you in product placement as well, right? Many times uh, in uh, the store, the store managers struggle which two items should be uh, kept close to each other? Where should we position the items? The way, a very, very simple and an effective way to do this is a lift value, uh, which is greater than one, or lift value corresponding to those products which are very, very high, can help the store managers to decide product placements on the aisle as well. I see, let me just make a move on to the second rule. The second rule is with respect to tropical fruit and other vegetables. If a person buys this, you can expect him to buy pip fruit as well. If a person buys pip fruit or other vegetable and other vegetables, you can expect him to buy tropical fruit, right? Uh, fourthly, people who buy citrus fruit and other vegetables can be expected to buy root vegetables. So this is very, very important. Since uh, the lift value is very, very high, I will take each of these rules very, very seriously. So this is the power of a priori algorithm. When you have millions and millions of product, it becomes a bit difficult to manually identify which item is uh, which item uh, sells best with which other item. A simple trick, a simple way of seeing this would be through the a priori algorithm. Uh, once you run the a priori algorithm on the data set, you will get a whole lot of measures like support, confidence, and lift. Sort it by the lift values. All the high lift values will come right at the top, which is a strong indication that customers have a preference to buy RHS, given that he has already bought uh, LHS. So this is a very, very simple uh, way of uh, doing market basket analysis. Let me just make a move on. Uh, in the earlier instance, I sorted by lift. Now, what I want to do is I want to show my audience instead of sorting by lift, is there an alternative way in which I can uh, show the same rules? And let me just recall the earlier uh, command. Now, instead of saying by lift, what you can do is you can also say by support. You can also say, I want to, uh, I want to sort this by support. Uh, please feel free to provide any additional parameters as well. Right. You can see here, it is sorting by support, right? And all the high support values come right at the top. What does this indicate? People who buy other vegetables can be expected to buy whole milk. 
people who buy rolls or buns, yogurt, root vegetables, that also can be, that also sort of uh, leads to whole milk. So to whom can you sort of cross-sell whole milk? To whom uh, can you pitch whole milk? As you can look at the LHS here, people who have already bought rolls or buns, yogurt, root vegetables, or other vegetables, you can cross-sell whole milk to these guys. So this is one way of showing uh, uh, this is one way of showing the result of the a priori by sorting uh, based on support. Now there is one more thing that you can do, and that is let me just uh, clear the screen. I'll recall the old command. I'll say inspect instead of saying head. What I'll do is I will say sort inspect of sort of sort. I'll be sorting the rules by support. This is the first level of sorting. Now, after support, what I want to do is I want to uh, I want to uh, again sort by confidence. So you can use a by keyword and you can say confidence within double quotes. I have opened uh, two uh, sorry three brackets one two three. So I'll be. Uh, using three close brackets as well, right? Now, since I'm just interested in the top five rules, I can see one up to five, right? So it, instead of showing me a whole uh, lot of uh, rules, what it will do is it will limit the number of rules to only the top five rules. I can close the bracket here. I don't need to give this particular bracket. Right. So what I've done here is I am supporting the uh, I am sorting the rules uh, by support and then by confidence. What you see uh, is very very interesting here. It uh, shows uh, which all items can be cross sold with the whole milk. You see something very interesting here. Here you see curds and yogurt appear here. Right. I don't think curds and yogurt were present earlier. Now what you see is if a person buys curd or yogurt, again, you can cross sell whole milk to him. If a person buys uh, butter or yogurt, you can, uh, again, if a person buys butter and yogurt, you can again cross sell whole milk to him, right? Tropical fruits, root vegetables lead to other vegetables. Citrus fruit, root vegetables lead to other uh, vegetables. And uh, you have uh, support, confidence, and lift values being demonstrated as well. Now, let me just uh, look at uh, whole milk. The lift value looks very, very promising because it's all uh, it's uh, consistently about two, right? It's about two uh, for uh, whole milk, which means uh, basically, given that a customer has already bought curd or yogurt, a person who buys curd or yogurt is two times more likely to buy whole milk as compared to a random customer. Similarly, you can say a person who buys other vegetables and curd is two times more likely to buy whole milk, right? Now, uh, let's look at uh, butter and yogurt. You can make the same argument here because the value is 2.5. A value of 2.5 means a person who buys butter and yogurt is 2.5 times more likely to buy whole milk as compared to a customer who is an average customer who is a random customer. So this is how we can run an a priori algorithm. We can sort of, uh, we can uh, uh, dump the results of a priori algorithm in an object and you can uh, choose to sort it based on lift or confidence or support. I uh, come to the end of, uh, I have come to the end of uh, today's presentation. I thank you very much for uh, watching uh, my video. I request you to subscribe uh, to my channel, The Outlier, and hit on the like button. I'll see you in uh, my next uh, video. Thank you very much.